I love how you pick the vinyl, like someone who does this a lot, who's gone to a lot of record. Well, I have a fierce record collection in my family home. How many do you have? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> it's like, it's my family's, my dad's record collection mixed okay. in with my brother's attitude. Still, when I go back there, I discover music all the time. I mean, I grew up with the records, but I still go in and I like pull out things that thinking, oh, wow, I didn't know we had this. This is really That's cool. amazing. And for that little We just have them in, in the big, it's an old schoolhouse, you know, and there's just a massive room and we've just got all, got all the records. Oh, that's but, fantastic. Yeah. Quite often spread them. out on the floor from like crazy sessions when we've been playing. Look at this cover, that is fantastic. That really is. Azuquita y su orquesta para salsa melade. We found this, and I, I just love the cover. You're ready I've to actually, go, go, go. I've got to just hear what this sounds like. I'm really desperate because I love the cover, and I have high hopes. But we have no idea this. what this we is don't, going to We don't know like. anything about what this is. And is it on the right side? It is. I think what we'll do is we'll fade it in, pretend like we know what we're doing. Sound of New York City. Bodega. This reminds me of like, you know what I mean? Like going in the bodega, buying a beer in a paper bag. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of cool. What it is for me, like, you know, like we started at the first 1966. Uh -huh. I went to live in New York for the first time when I was like two, two and a half, going on three years old. And we were living right under the um, the Williamsburg Bridge. Right, yeah. And the big salsa bands used to rehearse under the bridge, so I can oh, like amazing. really, yeah, it was like the, sound, the sound of New York in those days. It was a very different world, you know, now it's all tidy and clean and strange. And here, in fact, this record was made on that first trip that I was just talking about when, when we went little. to New York, when, when we went in like 19, late 66 or something. And, um, it's, this is the record that Don made, and my mother would have made the cover. That's incredible. Right? So this is when... This is a trip. It was like... Were two years old. Two and a, in a bit, and, and a bit, two and a half or something. And kind of my first memories are from, are from this, that time. Yeah. Wow. Where's Brooklyn? Why did you choose that track? You know, I've just been working with the thing. And you know, one of our very core strong connections is their love for Don's music. And for me, that's like, I've, I've felt very honored by that. And since we worked together, I haven't gone back and listened to the track, so it was kind of cool. Really? It's because <laughs> oh, I funny. just knew, I like knew what record it was on. But you know, it's funny for me, like I'm still, like it's the soundtrack of my upbringing. So like I know all the music, like, yeah. you know, like. It's part of you. It's part of me, but I'm still learning about it. Look, there's Eagle Eye, my brother. Oh my gosh, yeah. really? And I think I'm in here somewhere in the cup. There. Look. Is that that's you? me. Oh, you look like That's my mom, seven? my mother. Yeah, I was about six or seven. And look at here. It's my sister. Oh. That's so cool. And here's Eagle Eye again. Oh, no, right there. Oh, they have to see that in the camera. <laughs> he ran onto the stage out of my mother's lap, and that's like, we were living in Vermont, in Dartmouth. My dad was the music professor at Dartmouth University for a while. Well, Ornette yeah. Coleman was a kind of like a, my dad's guru, I think, mm. in a way. I mean, they met in the, the first record they put out together was called Something Else, I believe. Is that right? 
And they were militant, I mean, very, very militant. Don said the first time he met Ornette, it was like 110 degrees or something in, in L.A., and he was wearing two-toned shoes, a, a wool overcoat, and he had, like, straightened hair. I mean, they were ori original punks. Ah, oh, this is great. This is a bad tune. Ornette, Patti Smith, love Patti Smith. Cool, what a wall of yeah. stuff. The talking Heads, my old neighbors, Ian Jury, wicked. <laughs> God, I've listened to this record so much. Because yeah, we mm. lived in the same building as the Talking Heads. I heard that. So what was that like? Were they very noisy? They were really noisy. <laughs> Well, everybody, I mean, we lived on the top floor, yeah. and then um, a guy called Ernie Brooks, who used to be in The Modern Lovers, right. lived be yeah. beside, and then another musician called Arthur Russell yeah. used to rehearse in there, so it was like Ernie and his band, The Necessaries, The Talking Heads downstairs, and then my dad used to do his stuff. That's amazing. But it was quite funny, because I think, yeah, The Talking Heads were probably the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> were they? Yeah. Or did some people go bang on the doors? Turn it, yeah. turn it down. No, 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 no. We never told anyone to be quiet. Of course not. You must turn be it up. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to this stuff so much. I mean, I still do. Really? Yeah, you just sit down and, in and the house, it was interesting because me and like at home, we would always play records, and I spent actually because I suppose I didn't really get into music until I discovered punk myself. Really? Well, but I got into. Surprising. I was always listening. I like. Okay. I didn't start making music. I didn't learn an instrument really when I was growing up and stuff. But I listened. Like me and Don, my dad used to just sit and listen to records for hours. And what would you listen and, to with them? Oh, we'd listen to stuff like this. Okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like this one. This is a good one. Yeah. Amazing. I actually kind of miss out on a lot of music because I'm still a vinyl junkie. Well, and I don't sit enough on the internet and fiddle around. But I do, I go to, um, there's a great record store in Stockholm, Pet Sounds. Oh, well that's a good name for a record store, And it's isn't fantastic. It? And then I go to another one in, in London called Honest John's. And it's cool, you know, that a lot of people are putting out vinyl again now. I mean, it's, it was just a temporary little, fade out and I mean CDs were never going to be what no they're never going to be a thing Vinyl they'll get scratched so it's cool so now you know you can get a lot of like electronic music and dance stuff and you know inter any music of, of interest would probably choose to put out some vinyls at least a certain amount well Kieran's stuff is a good yeah. example like he's just done one with Terror Danger only coming out on, on vinyl own. exactly yeah. she's a tangerine Uh, with, That's uh, Bim so Sherman, ben Sherman yep. and the Dub Syndicate. Was that in here? Do you think was that the right cover? Was this a is this a record on Vogue or is it on something else? We'll figure yeah, it, it is. out. That goes in there. That goes in there. Yeah. See, this is what I'm saying. This is what happens to me. I just start taking records out, and then they're like <laughs> all <laughs> over the floor. Cause it's great. Okay. That's what it's supposed to be. Let's see. This could be. Is this a 45 or what is this? Okay, we've got Keep You Dancing on it and Can't Stop Jumping. Yeah, my great friend Adrian Sherwood produced these records, and this guy's Bim Sherman. He used to stay in the. In, me and Ari had a squat in Battersea, and Bim used to come and stay in our house. Wicked singer. I've been doing quite a lot of these sort of picking out your favorite record things, and Marvin Gaye, What's Going On, is always a record that I choose as a kind of all-time anthem, a sound, anthem like soundtrack to my life and um, the cover you know I've sat looking at that cover where he's wearing like the black PVC shiny raincoat and there's some raindrops right. on his collar and yeah. you know and it's yeah it's a big big part of everyone the story. knows that image yeah. Stop your messing around. so this must make you think of London so much yeah, it does, and it makes me think of actually, because it was before I moved to London that these records really came out, so I had them, 
I was listening to them in Sweden and in New York. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, in the, in the early days of like, when I kind of became a punk and you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was listening to the specials and madness. What did, uh, what did everyone think of you becoming a punk? I mean, was that accepted in your family? Oh you uh, yeah, uh, my parents were kind of relieved, I think. Because, <laughs> really? No, because I'd been trying to adapt to kind of living in the countryside in Sweden and I was trying to be kind of normal or something and, and I wasn't really doing being very happy. You weren't very and good I at think, being normal. I think they just saw me being able to open up and be more like myself. And who would know me? the real me better than my parents, so they were really good, big supporters. And I'm playing this because to me, Damon is kind of in the spirit of the specials. And in that, what way That for kind you? of posse. I think he, he just is like the next generation of, of, of a similar kind of tribe. And um, I think that, we, I was talking about him the other day and how I think he's a, for me, like a really inspiring person because he is so sort of, he's really able to bring people together and to do it in a kind of selfless way. And he just is a very creative human being. I mean, he's just constantly doing stuff in a fairly selfless way. And I really love this tune. It's just got a wicked, wicked groove. Can I make one request? What? Can we play a tiny bit of Biggie before we go to back? Okay, we can play a tiny bit of please, Biggie. Please, please. You have to, I never you have to find it. I'll, I'll find it. There he is. There he is. He's okay, here. so you make the request. Which track I did. would you like? I made... Oh, darn! Now you put me on the spot. Yeah. And then you get to pack away the records. Uh, and, I, and I have to pack away the, the records. Um, you know what? Should we just... just let's just it. put something on. And see what happens. We'll go with it. Who shot you? Separate the weak from the ops. Leap hard to creep them Brooklyn streets. It's all nigga. Fuck all that bigger So B.I.G. That was the New York girl in you that wanted Notorious B.I.G. on the remix for Buddy X. Yeah, actually that kind of happened through a Swedish friend of ours who was working up at, um, was it called Big Boy Records? Puffy's label yeah. in those days? Bad Boy. Bad Boy. And um, he was like, oh, we've, we've got this wicked new MC that's just coming up. Oh, he wasn't big, yeah, really. he was still yeah. called Biggie then. Biggie Smalls, yeah. he was called. So me and Cameron went and picked him up in bed -Stuy and drove him in to do the um, do the rap on the remix that these two Swedish guys, Christian Falk and Fabian Torsen had done. And he just, yeah, he just walked in. He was wearing camouflage. He'd been smoking a blunt in the car on the way in and then and the freestyling to some massive attack like some new backing tracks that we really? had it was quite funny oh wow i think he thought me and cam were a bit strange or whatever <laughs> and uh and then yeah he did one or two takes and and that was it done this is like kieran hebden's um, record collection is it how many does he have <laughs> i don't know a lot Shit, look at that cool eh uh, amazing. I worked with Premier and Guru, who is no longer with us, which is so sad. It breaks my heart. I still forget sometimes, and it's just, oops. This Billy, this Billy, this Billy Holiday. Amazing. Actually, DJ Premier is a, is a producer who actually really reminds me of Kieran. Oh, of course, of Kieran and, and, yeah. yeah. In what he's, way? Well, he's just like a very specific and he's like a less is more kind of, you know, like mm -hmm. a, has a very natural thing with what he's doing. And when he had just like, has one, I, he'll just find one groove, one thing that, that is the, the tune and yeah. that'll be it. 
It's like nothing more, nothing less. It's you two in the sounds of the yeah. album, or should I say the mother, bringing us back again from the drum and on the Congo. We came with a strong flow and continue to grow. Gangstar were kind of like it, the flavor, and I think there was something about their sound that kind of made sense with what we were doing, and we actually knew a um, couple guys in London that were working with them, and um, yeah, they just came to my house. I cooked them some chicken, and we did a few tracks. <laughs> I won them over with my chicken, and then they would, they'd do anything for me. In a chair, it's been such a pleasure. It's sorry I've, about the mess. I've never had so much chaos, but it's wonderful <laughs> chaos here at the end of Radio and Vinyl yeah. for Radio France. Thanks Thank you. so much for Take coming here. Beautiful. Beautiful.